Christian family, I greet you this morning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we gather this morning in your name to learn, to understand, and in our humble humbleness, acknowledge that you are God, that you can pick us up in all your compassion. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's scripture reading, there's two passages. The first one is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22, and the second one from Matthew, chapter 15, verse 32. And I'll be reading both of them from the New International Version. Lamentations reads, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fails. Matthew reads, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry or they may collapse on the way. Jeremiah was a faithful prophet of God in Jerusalem at the time of the siege and destruction by the Babylonians. Here's an interesting history, you can uh, read about it, but we see a lot of Christ in this history as well. He was rejected, beaten, put in stocks, and those medieval looking things that grab hold of your arms and feet, had a death sentence spoken over him, had his scrolls burnt, was left to die in the mud, and was called a liar. That's quite a lot that Jeremiah went through. And we've got to keep this in mind as we come to understand Lamentations chapter 3. The first 20 verses of Lamentations chapter 3, which is actually a poem, it describes the suffering of Jeremiah. And it is clear once you've read it that he was suffering physically, emotionally and spiritually. And as I was preparing this message, it really stood out for me because this chapter 3 is not titled Jeremiah's Troubles, or anything like that. It is titled, Great is Your Faithfulness. So at this point, we need to remind ourselves of our working definition of compassion. We've described it as not only recognizing another's distress, but a willingness to do something about it. And today is the day that we can explore this a little deeper. Compassion actually means to suffer with, and this is its original context, and we find this quite strongly in the Latin. So when somebody compassionately reaches out to you in your distress, or to me in my distress, it means that somebody is feeling your pain to such a degree that they're actually there with you. Let me expand on this. We have the realization that the moment someone extends compassion to you, then you're no longer alone in your suffering. And to me, this is a bit of a, quite a bit of a aha moment, because sometimes in our suffering and in our need, we tend to feel isolated and alone. But when there's compassion about, you're not alone. Secondly, we can ponder just for a moment about how important it is to see the distress of others and extend our compassion to them. It works both ways, this thing. But thirdly, and most importantly, we have the question, where is God when He sees your need and your suffering? And the answer is, He is there with you. So flowing from all of this, we need to touch again on our expanded understanding of compassion because two things have been introduced. There's a desire to ease the suffering of somebody, but also a desire to remove the cause of their suffering permanently. Easing suffering and removing the cause of suffering, well, these two things are certainly similar but also very different. On the one hand, 
removing the cause will ease the suffering. And on the other hand, easing the suffering can also be a journey to the cause of the suffering. There's an interplay here. But we need to know at this stage that God's compassion towards us is eternal in its consequences. Think about it. All of us were on a one-way journey to the smoking section of the life hereafter, and there was nothing that we could do about it. But God see, saw your need. He saw my need and became involved, not only in our salvation, but in the rest of our lives. I need to repeat this. God became involved because God is loving and compassionate. And you, brothers and sisters, are the target of His love and compassion. In everyday life, and we can to various degrees associate with the life of Jesus, Jeremiah, Paul, Peter, and all of them, our friends and family, their lives, our lives, have their share of suffering and pain. Yet God extends His compassion into our suffering and needs this side of death as well. And what is so wonderful is that there are no conditions to His compassion. There's no if-then sort of thing. It's compassion, it's grace, it's mercy, and it's unconditional love. Let's recall Matthew 15 verse 32. This is where Jesus fed the 4,000. And we'll include verse 37. But verse 32 says, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And here's verse 37. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. You see, Jesus was already moved with compassion because we read in verse 31 that the people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And in verse 32, we start to witness a continuation of Jesus' compassion. Now, everybody had ate until they had enough. And even then, seven baskets remained. But not the small Jewish baskets, the kofinos, but gentle baskets, the gentile baskets, spuris. A spuris is much bigger than the kofinos. How big is a uh, uh, spuris? It's really big. That's what they used to lower Paul over the wall in Damascus. We're talking about a substantial basket here. After Jesus fed the 5,000, 12 kofinos baskets were gathered in. After he fed the 4,000, 7 spuris baskets were gathered in. Now many might see the surplus, this leftovers, as waste until we realize these truths. Firstly, the compassion of Jesus is more than enough for every situation. It's abundant. You can't use it up. Seven loaves were given. Seven spuris baskets were left over. With what are you willing to trust Jesus? Secondly, people in those times took food with them on their journeys. And that the remaining food was gathered in before Jesus sent the crowd on their way leads me to theorize that there were takeaways available for that journey as well. Just abundance. Jesus, the bread of life, said, I have compassion. He has compassion relative to your spiritual needs and relative to your and my lifelong physical needs. He has compassion towards our daily needs and compassion for the whole world. You see, brothers and sisters, we serve a God of compassion. Our God is a God of compassion. That's why He moves in this world, in our lives, why He redeems us, 
why He heals us, why He comforts us, why He extends His grace, mercy, and kindness to us. He reaches into our deepest needs and delivers us from it. So here is our comfort. Jesus sees you suffering. He identifies with your suffering. He feels sympathy for you. He desires to ease your suffering and to remove the cause of your suffering. Out of love, he wants to be involved, and he will never leave you half full. But there are three important lessons to be learned from this morning's scriptures, and before I move towards closing this message, I need to share them with you. The first one is hope, and my notes here say that the less will become more. Because this is speaking of reliance. The seven loaves that the disciples brought along with them becomes seven baskets of leftover food. After Jesus, the bread of life's compassionate intervention. So it brings a question to us. Upon who is our reliance? The second thing is, your future, my future, must come out of our past. And this is speaking to gratitude right now. Now that Jesus has shown you gratitude, will your life reflect this reality? Part of this reality is opening yourself to his ongoing compassion and being compassionate towards others. Thirdly, give thanks. Praise God. Jesus did it, the multitudes did it, so should we. Let me pull things together. Lamentations 3 verse 22 reads, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, because His compassions never fail. We are not destroyed because of God's love, and His compassion never fails. His compassion didn't fail Jeremiah. It didn't fail the 5,000 or the 4,000 that he fed. And his compassion will not fail you. Reflect over what you have done to deserve or earn the compassion of God. Lamentation says we should be consumed which is fair and just. We are so full of sin. But Jeremiah also describes God as loving, and therefore, his compassion is not about to fail you or anybody else. Ours is to demonstrate Jesus' infinite compassion in this world, because it embraces his, his compassion embraces every dimension of need, and this, to me, is a beautiful truth. So when we come to the title of chapter 3 of Lamentations, I think the title is fitting. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Father, this morning we stand in awe and amazement. Where we should be consumed, wiped out, destroyed because of our sin. You extend a loving compassion to us. We understand and learn, O oh God, that you know exactly what's happening in our lives. And you are compassionately involved with that as well. Lord Jesus, you are everything we need. And we need you. Be with us in this week, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining me this morning. Please remember to pop in at our Facebook page, give us a like, talk to us, like this video, and subscribe to this channel. Bye-bye.